still stay home? No, I'll stay in bed. Okay, push this down. Again, the bigger your template, the more it's going to bend. Get that worked in there. Let's put some green on there. So for you, as you are doing this, um, if you're gonna play around with it, slips are where I want you to, to work. They're a whole lot cheaper. Um, like a whole bucket of slip, this green slip probably costs like $3, where one of our things of underglaze costs about $15. So if you're just kind of playing around with the technique and don't know what you're trying to accomplish yet, I don't know if I picked up some red. Um, play around with it. Now there's some things I'm gonna show you in a second that you can only do with underglaze, at least right now. And now we have that. Okay. So we have a stencil, the red one, and we have a mask, the green one, right? Okay. Um, those of you who are sleeping, you shouldn't be. I know life's, life's tough, but. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and let it dry, and we're gonna come in and layer on top of it. Um, I like to use my extra extra pieces. So I have my elephant, it's green here. Um, even if it's not gonna make a, an elephant, it'll make something. I like to take mine and place them on other pieces. Rub it in, and this is a transfer, and this is a quick transfer. I'm gonna show you how to do a dry transfer or another transfer in a second. Push that down, you can hit it with a rubber rib. And then that's gonna transfer some of that slip there. Now, you may go, I don't like that. Um, there's a whole bunch of ways we can add information and if all you can think of is very specific ways um, and not loose ways, then I think you're gonna be missing the whole point of this process. Um, the idea of random can be really important. You have some control, but not a ton of control. Um, and again, back to the, the idea of some people are self-proclaimed perfectionists, or they're really, really tight, um, and that's fine. We can work that way, but you should learn to do other things. You're missing out on so much um, if you don't explore, um, and if all you're doing is holding to this really rigid criteria and I can't go past this criteria, but that's where we learn. And so if we're learning, then we're, we're gonna, or if we're exploring, we're gonna be learning. Great example would be that lid today, right? It bugged you. It bugged me too. I wish I hadn't have flung it off. I really liked how that fit. But something happened, I worked with it. Now, a lot of times you really would just start over. Like, if it's going to be a really tight lid, I would just throw another lid. That's it. Um, but that's not what I'm going to do for today. So, um, okay, the next thing is underglaze transfers. Now, I started to do some slip transfers, and this slip used to work for this, but if you can see it, you see how the slip's kind of falling off? So something's wrong. 
I think it needs to be um, deflocculated, which means I'm going to put something called sodium silica in it, or I could put like uh, um, watered down Epsom salt in it, and that'll help it stick to the paper. But I'm going to show you what this does. The reason why these are kind of cool, you can create a pattern or design, and then even cut other things onto it. So we're going to cut a, a diamond out, but again, it's kind of chipping off pretty, pretty fierce today. So we're just gonna pass that. We'll do the same thing to um, with underglaze. So masking and um, stenciling. And now we're gonna do underglaze painting. So this can be designs and patterns. It can be um, around. So what I'm gonna do here I printed this off. Now, if you're going to do a print off, it needs to be onto laser printer or a copy machine. It cannot be onto, it cannot be out of a water-based um, printer. So if you have a color printer at home, um, it probably won't work for this. But you could print it off and we could make a copy of it. So you're just going to, and the reason for that is if your paper, sorry, if your ink gets wet, it will just smear. It'll cause you some problems. Now, this is something I want to really have you understand. Um, and I'll give you an example of last semester. Last semester in Ceramics 2, I gave, we did a similar project. And when I said, I want you to explore and see what underglaze transfers can do, see what uh, masking and, um, get this painted, masking and stenciling does. And then they didn't do it. Um, I asked them to explore. And let's, let's pretend that right here is the bare minimum that I asked them to do. They were like down here, okay? And so what we didn't do is anything above and beyond. So I have three other techniques I wanna show you, not for this project, for another project. But if you, and I feel like if the class doesn't explore this, we won't do it because the other ones are more technical. They're, they're more expensive. Um, and if your level of engagement is low, then my level of wanting to show you bigger things is low. Okay. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm not going to paint much more. I am going to show you how to transfer this though. Yeah. I'll stop. Painting. So I did this other one last class period. It's now dry. Oh, I do want to create a design though. Anything that I put on first is going to be what shows most. So if I put down this light, this olive green first, and then I put burgundy over it once it's dry. I'm going to put it down here. But if I were to put it over it, the olive green should come out on top. Okay, we'll just do that. Now, I'm going to cut out the bunny. Okay. Bring this back over here. So we can see it. 
All right, I'm going to, I need a rubber rib and I need a spray bottle. So I'm gonna come in here and spray this. Front and back. And I'm gonna let it drip for a second. And then I'm gonna set it on here. And as I set it on there, I'm going to work that in. This is just copy paper. So creating your own pattern or design will work on copy paper. You can also use the newsprint, like the stuff we used for our mugs. So I get that worked in, and then what I'm gonna do is just check to see if it's transferring. It is, I want it to transfer just a little more. Now, there are lots of ways you can do this. Um, I'm gonna transfer that like so. And can you see the bunny on there? So we transfer that, that bunny on there. Now, when we transfer, it is not always gonna be a perfect transfer, as in the lines are not gonna be crisp and clean. Um, and this is where we get into that. We need to kind of allow things to happen. Um, and, it, and it's good, it's good to allow them to happen. But examples of some of those layering techniques, um, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that, that you can do um, with layering brush strokes. You see right here, these little honeycombs, that's one of those advanced techniques that I wanna show you. But they cost money, where this is pretty cheap. Um, a sheet of these honeycombs costs about $7. And if you're not willing to spend the time now, I'm not willing to spend the money later. So um, play around with it. From here, what else can you do to it? Um, I mean, you could create another transfer and put it on there. I know that's only a half an elephant, but we're gonna do that. You can do these as wet transfers and dry transfers. A dry transfer is what I just did with the bunny. I painted it and then it dried and then I got it wet again. You can put these on like this. I'm gonna off center that just a little bit. Now, one of the nice things about doing stencils or um, masking is you can use those on other parts so let me show you an example while that sits there for a second so if we have a piece of paper and we're going to create some patterns So we have some patterns here, and let's take this off. If a little bit of your paper sticks, it's going to be okay. It'll burn off. Okay, that's going to be sweet. Just trust me when I say it's going to be sweet. Okay, turn this over. to add water to these. Set them on here. And if you don't like stripes, what other shape could you put on there? What could you cut out? A square. A square. What else? Triangle, circle. What about other, like, images? Waves. Waves. What about something else? Letters. Letters. Yeah. 
Anyone have a, uh, a Cricut machine at home? You could cut paper things out. Oh, which reminds me, I have a, a doily I was going to use, which is in the Cricut. I have a Cricut machine at home. I just have never used it. Yeah. In the, the craft room down there. Tori's used it. You know all the sayings on her wall? They came from our Cricut machine. These are little doilies. I've never used these, so let's see. They are a little thicker. I don't know if they're gonna stick. Oh, that's because there's like four of them on there. So, doilies aren't as much of a thing as they used to be, but your grandmas all had them. Your great grandmas for sure. What are they for? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they use doilies for. Someone want to look that up? I mean, I know they would put these lace kind of things on dresses and napkins and hankies. They're probably like coasters. So like little coasters. So there's some little patterns on there. So I'll take these types of things and then I'll put them on something else. And it'll transfer. And it doesn't always transfer exactly like, but it starts giving those layers. Um, and just a little thing for you. Let me come in here and paint this. Um, I know there's a lot of ways we can be very particular. Um, I know in some homes, I won't pick on the Everton's, but if it is not white and pristine, it doesn't belong. Am I, am I wrong? Right. It, it's just one of those things. And I know her mom and, and it's, it's, and it's okay. We all have our own ways of doing things. Um, so not always would, would this statement or this work. Um, but I'm a big fan, and actually a lot of people are a big fan of not having perfectness. So there are plenty of things that go in a very nice, crisp, um, pristine home that are antiqued, that are kind of beat up a little bit, um, that have a little bit of character to them. Um, and they can be furniture, they can be accent pieces, all kinds of fun stuff we can do with them and that's kind of what we're doing so I'm going to take these strips so if you can see there we have that nice crisp clean strip now and I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it over here and one of the things I really like about this is and these aren't necessarily a set but if I'm working this way this strip line here and then this strip line here are going to be, they're going to relate to each other. Accent. They accent. And, and even then I could, another thing I could do, because that's a little bit on there, you could come in on this actual piece. So it's on there. I could come and it's now the opposite. And again, it's accenting, it's showing that they relate. Because similar patterns, designs, and things like that um, make uniformity to your pieces. So we put that on, I should have rubbed that a little more. Let's do that. Rub it a little more. So 
So if you want to learn more um, in-depth surface techniques, you'll put some effort into this. If you don't, you won't. Now, you're making three pieces, right? Right? There's a whole lot of non-head shaking. Um, you're making three pieces. Let's say that your gut says, I want these crisp and clean. Okay. But the requirements are you need to be a little bit more exploratory. So let me explain something that I learned about myself as an artist a long time ago. Um, how many of you like to pencil draw? You draw with a pencil. Okay. Anyone want to guess that I do or don't like it? Don't. I don't because it's very small. It's very uh, tight. Um, now, I can do it, and I actually have a lot of drawings that are very tight. So, I did something, I learned something in art school, and it went like this. When I had a project that was really tight, and any time I started to think, let's pull out the charcoal, because that makes big, dark marks, I would set up another drawing or painting, and I would do that over here. The assignment was this. So I would do something else over here. Sometimes it turned out, sometimes it was just a way to blow off steam. Um, for you, you're making three pieces. And hopefully you learn as you go um, as this dries, that paper will come off. I'm not going to try to scratch it off right now. Um, hopefully you learn as you go. And whatever you're doing is informing what you're doing next. Both positively and negatively. Or in the, the sense of, you may do something and go, I do like that. And I want to put that on my next piece. You may do something and go, I don't like that. I won't put that on my next piece. Okay, that's informing your work, right? And so, for you, you may go really exploratory, medium exploratory, and very light exploratory because you're loosening up. Now, if you're doing it because you, um, I don't want to use the word lazy. That's a good word. It is a good word, but it's not the right word. But anyways, find your own word that fits in there. Um, if you're doing it because you don't want to just be, really think about your process, then that's a problem. But if you're doing it because you really do like things that are crisp and clean, explore, loosen up or, or tighten up a little bit, and then tighten up some more as long as it hits the requirements. And I'm fine with that. Um, but try the exploratory, exploring. You may find something that you're just really into. And you're just like, I really like how that looks. Um, whatever it is. Here's one we did last class. Stencil um, with the green and then some transfers with the yellow. Now we're gonna put some red on it. Now I'm going to let these dry and fire. You're not gonna be exploring until probably, well, let's talk about that for a second, but, um, and the reason why I bring this up, I don't know what some of these colors come out like because it's been a couple of years since I've used the slips. Um, so I will have these dried and fired so we can kind of see what they look like. Um, I, I have no idea what this red comes out. It could come out black because uh, sometimes the red oxides come out, come out black. Um, Okay, time frames in the last minute. We're gonna start on Tuesday, Thursday. So Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday. Then we're at the end of the term, okay? So Thursday, you need to come with ideas on what you're going to make. Are you going to be on the wheel or are you going to hand build? Please don't show up on Thursday and go, I think I'm going to think about what I'm going to do today. You should have drawings. You should have the 
the techniques that you're gonna be practicing. You should even have maybe the lid types if you're gonna be um, on the wheel. What kind of lids are you gonna do? Now, Thursday. And Monday is a short day because it's our makeup Monday. Wednesday is the ACT. Um, and so Thursday you'll be in here. Those first three days, you need to be making that Thursday, maybe start exploring, um, trimming, whatever. And then you have the Monday and Wednesday. This project has to be turned in before the end of the term. It's like your final for the term. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, in there, I'm going to show you some ideas for our horsehair project, horsehair sagger firing project, um, which is what we're gonna work on right after the term and before spring break. Um, and that's gonna be about a four day project, five day project, something in there. Yeah, and then, it, and then we're done. So do you have any questions? Okay, if you do have questions, get them ready so first thing on Thursday we can cover them um, yep that's it go away